best way to plan is many weeks at a time, and you can do that using the Matrix in Planning Center services. So I am going to start us out in a plan, and this is just showing one week at a time, but the matrix is good to see many weeks. So I can click this matrix button. But wait, if you do that, you're going to go to the wrong place because we have a brand new version of the matrix. So before I do this, I'm going to click this little options button, and if you are an administrator, editor, or scheduler, you can click to preview this new matrix. So make sure you check that first, then just click the matrix button. This is going to load up many different plans, each one in their own column. So I have a column for November 13th, then the 20th, 27th, and December 4th. And as I scroll down, I can see there's many different sections. So brand new in this new matrix is times. This did not exist in the old matrix. You can now see all your services, rehearsals, and other times, and even use this menu to add them. We've also got our service order. You can see everything happening in the service order, and one thing that's brand new you're seeing here is that if you use custom row colors, those are available in the new matrix. We also have all of our different teams, so I can see who's scheduled for drums across all of the different weeks that I have loaded in the matrix. And now we're going to talk about setting up the matrix. So by default, it's going to load a couple of your next plans. But if you want to see more than just the plans that are shown here, the fastest way to do this is using the Load One Next button. So this is a button right here at the top, and I click this, it's going to load the next plan after December 4th. And I can just keep clicking this, and it will just add the next plan for me. Now, if I want to add a specific plan instead, I can actually click right here on the dates in the header and see the quick load plans pop over. So if I want to see my Christmas service, I can check December 25th and that loads in place right there. I can also quickly load plans from other service types. So let's say I also want to see some things from the traditional service. I can just type traditional service, click to add that, and then choose some of the dates from there. The dates that you add here are going to be added in chronological order. So if I scroll back over, I'm going to see November 13th for traditional and then November 13th for contemporary service. Now, this popover is called quick load. And quick means temporary. So this matrix, if I come back into my contemporary service matrix, it's not going to know that I want to add all these extra plans and see all this extra stuff because I just loaded it from Quick Load. Now, if I want the matrix to always load with a whole bunch of extra plans, what I can now do is go into that matrix's settings. Over here on the left is the settings gear for the contemporary service matrix. And when I click it, I can see how many plans are going to load every time I come into this matrix. So this is set up to load zero previous plans and the three next plans in the contemporary service. Every time I come back in here, if I were to change this, it would load that new number of plans. Templates are new in the new matrix. You could never see templates in the matrix before, but now you can. So if I click to view my all teams week one and three template, it adds that as a column right here, and I can see all the things that exist in this template, and I can even drag things from a template into a plan. The last part of our settings are sections. Sections are a way for you to tell the matrix what you care about. So when I am in my contemporary service matrix, I'm usually, let's say I'm doing scheduling. So instead of seeing all the rest of this stuff, I can actually hide some of these things. I don't want to see series art. I don't want to see times at all. I don't want to see my order. I just want to see some of my teams. The tech, band, not the hospitality team, not the vocals, speakers, or the cafe ministry team, just these teams. And just like that, I have customized what this contemporary service matrix looks like for me. Everybody that logs in gets their own settings for their matrixes. So when I load the contemporary service next time, 
This is exactly what it's going to look like. Now, the contemporary service is one of my service types for my San Diego campus. We also have a traditional service in this San Diego folder. Well, because we have now saved matrices, I can click on contemporary service and right from here, I can jump to the parent folder, San Diego. That is going to load a completely new matrix and it's going to have plans from the traditional service then contemporary, then traditional, then contemporary again. So now I've just jumped into a matrix for everything in this folder. And I can see once again all these different sections, but you remember I just turned off the order and times? Well, those were saved for the contemporary matrix. San Diego has its own settings, and so I'm seeing the sections that I want to see there. Now, what if I want to see service types that aren't all in the same folder. Let's say my church has a few campuses, a San Diego campus and a campus in Dallas. And I'm responsible for looking up, uh, for overseeing the contemporary service at both of these campuses. Well, they're not in the same folder. In the old matrix, it'd be a lot of clicks every time. Now we have custom matrices. So when I go to my matrix menu, I can say new custom matrix. That is going to, first of all, copy all the settings that you're looking at right now into a brand new custom matrix. So I don't want to see the traditional service. Instead, I want to add a new service type and I want to look in my Dallas folder and I want to say contemporary service. That immediately loads the next two plans for that because that's what my settings say. And now I have a custom matrix that I'm going to rename to all campuses. Once again, this is just for me. I'm the only one that's going to have access to this matrix. But when I go in, I can now see my all campuses matrix that have my contemporary service from both of those campuses in it. So I'm going to go to my sections setting and I'm going to customize this because what I'm doing is overseeing the worship part of these services. So I'm going to actually um, turn off the times. I'm going to completely turn off the teams and just focus on the order here. So when I'm viewing my order, I can see my order of service across all of these plans. First, I'm going to turn on those row colors that I showed you about, and that is in our settings. So in the sections panel, under order, there is a new checkbox here for row colors. Now, if you don't have row colors set up, you're going to need to do that. So click the question mark and type row colors to get to a lesson that shows you how to set up custom item row colors. Once you've set those up, you can choose to view them in the matrix, and now you can see all of my songs are colored in green, any of my baby dedications are in pink, announcements are in purple, and my message is in orange to help you track things across the different plants in here. So I want to add some things to my service order. So I am going to drag a header over here from the left, and I'm just going to drag it right onto this particular plan. And this is just an example, but you know, I'll just say my header. And that header now is added. I can also drag things if I want to add a song, not just from the left, but maybe that's far away. When I hover over this plan, I actually can see um, these little shortcuts up here. So I'm going to add a song, which is S. So I'm just going to drag that right underneath Revelation Song and drop that here, and I can get my whole song library loaded up. Now what's great is I could click one song. That would be nice. But you know what would be even nicer? If I could choose many songs. So I'm going to click this button at the top right to add multiple. You can do this in a plan as well, but here in the matrix, you can do it too. When I click Add Multiple, it adds these checkboxes here. So I'm going to say, I want to add Your Love Never Fails. I want to add This Is Amazing Grace. And I want to add What a Beautiful Name. It is remembering which order I clicked those in. And when I'm done, I can say Add Three. And it adds all three of those songs right into my matrix in that exact same order. Another 
great thing about the new matrix is that it's bringing in some of the stuff from the plans page. So when I click This is Amazing Grace, it's going to show me all the details in my item drawer. And what's great about that is I have all of my files are now accessible from the matrix. You could not get to this before. So I can see my arrangement files and all of my chord charts and audio files from here. And not only can I see them, I can click any of them and I can get a preview of my chord chart. I can even open the media player by clicking on any of my audio files and it will load all of that, an entire playlist so I can rehearse my whole set and not even leave the matrix. There is more actions, there are more actions at the top of this heading in the actions menu. Most of these sections, like the order, have their own actions menu to give you more power than ever. Importing templates, getting to the media player, downloading a songbook of all of the PDFs for this plan, or even completely wiping out everything in this order of service if you want to start over from scratch. The last thing we're going to see is taking advantage of some of these colors. Let's look at our announcements. So when I click announcements here, I can see that I've got this description. And because I'm looking at this all campuses, one of the things I'm trying to do is making sure that we're announcing the same things at both campuses. So here's uh, my San Diego campus. Let's look at announcements for Dallas. Yep, same thing. And I can do that. From here, yep, the next week we're doing something different on both of these campuses and they're the same. So it's really helpful to be able to see those descriptions, but there's a better way. So I can go into my settings and there's a new section that you can enable. And it is for repeated item fields. So that is talking about any item that repeats the announcements are repeating. It's in multiple plans. So I actually want to see the descriptions for all those announcements. So I'm going to turn on item descriptions. Since this is a new section, I need to scroll down. And now I'm seeing an item description section. And this is going to include rows for any items in my order that happen multiple times. So here are my announcements. I can see announcements for every single plan in here. I can click and I can change the announcements that I'm going to show right here by typing, hitting enter, and now that is saved as the item description for announcements in this specific plan. Let's talk about scheduling in the matrix. So I am going to switch back to my contemporary service matrix. And I have set that up to show my tech band and choir only. I've turned off the rest of the sections in the settings. So let's take a look at my tech team and do a little bit of scheduling. So the first way you can do this is just by clicking on a needed position. If I want to schedule lyrics, I can just choose Alan, add, and I filled that needed position. The second way you can do this is by dragging and dropping. Almost everything in the matrix you can drag from one column to another. People, songs, media, items. So if I want Matthew to be scheduled for camera on November 13th, I can just drag him over here, drop him right there on camera, and he is instantly scheduled. I can also add a person just using the menu. So if I click this menu, click Add People, I can now see everyone in my tech team, and I could choose people from here to schedule Gracie for sound. If you know you need to schedule somebody, but you don't know who yet, you can add additional needed positions. That's done also from this menu. Just click Needed Positions, and now it's going to expand that team to show you every single position in that team even if they're not used on this plan yet. Like producer, let's say I need a producer. It was zero, so it wasn't showing. Let's increase it to one. And now when I say done, now I've got a row for producer to make sure I don't forget to schedule someone in that position. Now, once all my needed positions are scheduled, I can auto schedule them. So there are two ways to do this. One, the bad way. The bad way would be clicking this menu and clicking auto schedule here. 
If you are trying to schedule for the whole matrix, that's the only reason this is the bad way, because this will only schedule it for this one plan. Instead, to auto schedule for all of these plans, I want to click the auto schedule button all the way up here. So auto schedule at the top right will allow me to auto schedule the entire tech team for all of the plans that I'm showing. And that's going to go through and fill every single needed position by choosing people with no conflicts that have not served in the longest amount of time. And then the last way to schedule here is if I go into the choir, I can see I've not scheduled anybody for this November 27th plan. So I'm going to click my menu to add people. There's the choir. And instead of in choosing individual people, I want to add multiple. So I'm going to click Add Multiple. Then I'm going to click this handy Select All button. Every single person on the choir is selected, and I can add all 23 people to the plan at once. Mm -hmm. Once you've got your people scheduled, then the next step, as you might already know, is to email them. And you want to email your people from the matrix, because this will send them one email for everything you want them to do over the next month, two months, whatever you have loaded in the matrix, rather than sending them a separate email for each. The last thing that we can talk about in the matrix is printing. So if you ever want to print a report of things that happen across multiple plans, first step is loading the matrix with those plans. That is telling Planning Center, where should I pull data for this report that I'm about to print? Well, you have to load the matrix up. Then you can click this print button in the header. And this will open our matrix print report modal. You can tell it, oh, I clicked the wrong button. I clicked email. Let's click the printer icon that is traditionally used for printing. And we've chosen to stick with that as well here at Planning Center. So in the print modal, I can print my sample matrix report. And what's nice is we give you a whole bunch of community reports, um, reports that we have pre-designed. And most of these reports are only going to print the things that are visible on the matrix. So you can hide, you can collapse the band if you don't want it to be printed. So when I click submit here, um, the band was collapsed and the choir was showing. So I'm only going to get a printout of my choir for this because that was the only section that was actually showing. You can see band and tech are collapsed. If I open these and then print, then it will send this to my print report. Lots of other reports are available when you click that print icon. Just remember, load the matrix with what you want to see and then click print. If you are ready to try out this new matrix, once again, you can get to this matrix from a few places. From within a plan, you can also get to a service type matrix from this matrix button at the top of a service type. You can jump to a folder matrix from the matrix button next to a folder. Or once you get in there, you can add a custom matrix. So make sure that you view this little options menu just once to make sure you're previewing the new matrix and you're good to go. 